We glorify your holy name. Oh, it's a wonderful thing for us to walk in, walk in divine health, walk in the provision of God. It's always good to seek him. And as we seek him, the Bible says that all these things shall be added into our lives. That's the heart of God for us to be walking with him, understanding him, and to know him uh, better and better. And every time we go to the scriptures, remember that God will speak to you. God does talk to people. The Holy Spirit does talk, and for the purpose, so that you will never miss the mark, you'll always stay in course with what he wants you to do. That's the reason we gather together, and also we listen to sermons, we spend time alone with the Bible, because every time you read the Bible, God has an opportunity of speaking to us. Now we believe that the Holy Spirit who dwells in us does the speaking. Yes, I know that. But still, it's good for us to read the Bible, because this Bible, the Word of God, which is a truth, has to be established in your heart with the with what's happening around and what's uh, getting into the minds of the people and the kind of belief systems that people are having from time to time. And uh, they're negating the word, word of God. Sometimes we talk to Christians and they say, we have never read that in the scriptures. Well, that means they don't read the Bible. I'm surprised. I'm surprised when they say, I didn't know that it was in the, it was in the Bible. Oh, I, I missed it somewhere. It's not that you missed it. It simply means I haven't given, given enough time with the Bible to get along with the Bible and let the Bible teach me. And even the, even the young generation, if they don't get into the scriptures, they're going to get out of the scriptures very fast because they're going to get out of truth. Because truth is actually perished out of the mouths of the people. As the scriptures tell us, it's very sad when, when we see how people have said it's not too important for us to, have, to, for us to know the whole Bible. And uh, the truth is perished out of their hearts and their, their mouths because they haven't taken time in reading the truth. It's important that we read the truth and know what's in the scripture. Otherwise, you have all kinds of preachers that are coming up now. All kinds of preachers my, they're just speaking out. You might even think, if you don't, didn't know the scriptures, you would just solo anything that they say. Just solo anything. That's the reason the Holy Spirit has, has brought into us uh, this, the scriptures in printed matter for us to read it. Now you might say, what about the illiterate people? Yeah, at least somebody could read it for the person. At least somebody could talk to them. They're not good. They, they, they don't understand. They, can't, they cannot read. That's okay. But somebody who understands the word and reads the word can also be a blessing to them. In Jeremiah, it says like this. In Jeremiah chapter 7. In Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 28. But thou shalt say unto them, This nation that obey not the voice of of the Lord their God, this, na this is a nation that obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, neither receive correction, neither receive correction, correction comes through the scriptures, and truth, uh, truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. As a nation, as a nation we find that people as a whole church sometimes, we find that they have no time for the truth. Nothing else comes out of their mouth except for what's happening around in the world. Truth doesn't come out of their mouth. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouths. It's a very sad thing. As a whole nation, how can something come to you if you don't even meditate on it? How can? 
You will never speak the truth until, uh, unless you, you meditate. You've got to deposit something for you to withdraw. Your deposit is what you put into your heart and your withdrawal is what comes out of your mouth. So when you talk to whole loads of people who are calling themselves Christians and uh, truth is cut off from their mouths. There is no truth anymore heard in the way that they, they speak and behave. And there is so much of compromise within themselves that they can easily compromise. And anything goes today. Jeremiah chapter 7. But thou saith unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction, nor receiveth correction or instruction. That word correction also means instruction. Because truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. They don't have any truth anymore in their, in their mouth. They just taken away the truth. They just take words so easily and how words can help them in any which way, uh, how they could appease their conscience. Scriptures, they have never, 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 never read scriptures, but just for an argument, they would read a scripture and try to come argue with us and say, okay, this is, this is what the word says. You don't know the Bible. You know, this guy who came to me once and I was at a prayer meeting and uh, he came to me and said, oh, do you know what uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says? I said, I have not. You don't know. That's a problem. That one scripture he had so memorized and he wanted to just say, you don't know this scripture. I said, I'm not, I, said I don't memorize scripture. I just let the Holy Spirit, and I'm not challenging you. So you read the scripture. I mean, you can read it out and let me know what it says. But he didn't know nothing at all. Anything apart from that, he didn't know. He had just taken that scripture, I believe it's 29, 29, Deuteronomy, and he was trying to, trying to prove secret things belong unto the Lord. But those things which shall be revealed belong to us. So what he was trying to say is, you preachers, you're just, you don't know what you're saying. All secret thing belongs to the Lord. But I want to tell him that he revealed secrets through his spirit. He, he, he didn't know anything. He just take once, he just took the letter. The letter kills, the Bible says. If you take the letter only, it kills. Secret thing belongs to the Lord. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and unto the children forever. At least the things that are revealed to us, he didn't, he didn't even know. But he just took this one scripture. Every preacher, every preacher who walks into that house, he just takes the scripture out. He was not a believer. And uh, of course, he was a regular church goer. But then that doesn't make you a real believer. That we may do all things, all the words of his law. So why don't we do what is supposed to be done according to the word of the Lord? But what he was trying to say is, you are not thorough with scriptures. I, I was so thorough with one scripture. I said, good, you are thorough with one scripture. So why don't we do the rest of the scripture? What do they say? Secret things belong to the Lord, okay? But God has revealed them unto us. The scriptures tell us by the Holy Spirit, he has revealed them unto us. God has revealed them unto us in the book of 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which the Lord has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. He reveals things to us. You may not know the whole Bible, but you will know exactly what you need to do concerning situations in life. God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. He didn't know that scripture. For the spirit searches all things pertaining to the life that you are living even the deep things of God, 
and he reveals it unto us you may not you know when the devil brings a word or when he comes against you you don't have to throw the whole bible at him he's not going to flee because a letter is not what he's afraid of he's afraid of the spirit jesus when he came against jesus jesus spoke and said it is written he didn't throw the whole bible at him nor did he start quoting scriptures from the book of genesis to the all the scriptures that he had in memory but he quoted the scripture exactly what was relevant so always remember if if if, if a person is only somebody who tries to win an argument with you by picking up a scripture he's only killing himself and he's killing you too in second corinthians chapter 3 second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6 who has made us able ministers of the new testament referring to each and every one of us not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth the letter killeth but the spirit gives life it's a spirit that gives life so when you speak a word in the spirit it's a spirit that's going to do the job and people who are well versed or sometimes they are mem- they memorize certain scriptures when they meet you they really want to you know they, they they go to people and they say okay let me collect some scriptures out and let me just go and throw that at them so when they come they are only killing themselves and they are trying to kill you but the spirit always gives life the spirit encourages people the spirit heals spirit brings joy and peace and strength i mean i can just pick up any scripture and try to kill you but that's not how it is condemnation never helps anybody it destroys your faith so we are made able ministers of the new testament not of the letter not of the letter but of the spirit so the holy spirit in you is the spirit of truth he knows everything he knows the truth there's nothing that you can hide from him he is truth himself and when he ministers to you you know that is comforting that is it's bringing correction it keeps you strong and it helps you grow in the faith in uh second timothy or first timothy or we will read second timothy second timothy second timothy and chapter 3 and verse 14 but continue thou in the things which you have learned and has been assured of knowing of whom you have learned them right and from a child you have known the holy scriptures referring to timothy whose mother and uh, his grandmother they were committed and he said from whom you have learned which he, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith it will make you a wise person the scriptures will make you a wise person unto salvation through your faith which is in Christ Jesus and verse 16 says this is what the scripture is for all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine for teachings for reproof for correction for instructions in righteousness not to condemn so when some somebody comes and wants to sit with you and he wants to argue with you just to condemn you he is not coming with scriptures according to the spirit he just wants you to just bow down to the little that he has the little game that he wants he or she wants to try with you right that's not the way scriptures are read so they usually come with somebody who has no scripture knowledge that's the reason we have to have scripture knowledge and it's not difficult if you just give time 
little by little, little by little, start reading the scriptures, little by little, and, and you'll begin to know that the spirit of truth that is in you would magnify the scriptures. You may read a little bit here, but the spirit of truth will give you the understanding. And it's going to be so relevant to your life, to the life that you're leading. And you'll be totally a different character. No more are you going to be the same. You're going to be totally a different person. So all scripture given by inspiration of God <clears throat> and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God or a woman of God or a child of God or we children of God, all of us put together, we may be perfect, thoroughly furnished for all the good works. You are fully prepared with the scriptures. Not You don't go with the scriptures for an argument. If somebody does that, you've got to say, I'm going to stay away from that. I have no time to argue with you with scriptures. The scripture knowledges, knowledge that I have is only furnish, has furnished me for all good works, not to condemn, not to win an argument, or not to feel that I have, I'm better than you. That's, that's when the scriptures are not being rightly used. So we have to stay away from such things. Another scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them. That your profiting may appear to all. So when you meditate the scriptures and you give your heart and soul to the scriptures, your profiting may appear to all. People might know there's something different in you. You're not trying to prove a point. You're not trying to argue with people bringing scriptures up. You're speaking out of the spirit of truth, which can help people, which can help people. The next verse says, take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself. Watch out. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine or to the teachings and continue in them. It's important that you continue. Don't just take, well, you, you kind of think, okay, these scriptures that I was meditating on and now they have expired. I got to go in for some new scriptures. And then that season expires, I got to go for something else. No, it doesn't expire. Right? People who have that kind of a mentality, there's something wrong with them concerning the scriptures. When I sit with some people, I know what they, what they really mean. They just pick up some scriptures from here and there. I said, it's important that we have the whole counsel of God, not just sticks and bits from here and there. That's not how it is. Now, although we take scriptures, I mean, on a Sunday morning, I cannot start from the book of Genesis. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start from the book of Genesis chapter 1. Next week, when you, I might take about 10 years. But that's not the ministry of the Spirit. That's just reading the letter. You can do yourself. I don't have to do that. But the Spirit of the Lord knows your heart and your position and what you are in need today. And he's going to minister to you accordingly. And although I take scriptures from here and there, I'm not taking them out of context. But I'm taking it for the sole purpose that we all might be benefited. Continuing them for doing this, you shall both save yourself and them that hear you. You will save yourself. That word save means heal, deliver, protect you. you know, whenever we see the word save, we kind of think only of one area. But that word save means you can be entirely saved in many areas in your life. And them that hear you. So whom you come in touch with, you are able to talk to them and minister to them and save them also. Giving them the life, giving words out of your mouth. So I believe 
it's important. Right, so I'm just going to close from there and uh, minister to you the, the, the covenant meal. And the covenant meal is very important. It's not just a ritual. It's something that we believe in, have faith. We have faith in the covenant meal. It's important for us to have faith in the covenant meal because we are living in dangerous times. So it wouldn't be dangerous for us if you believe in the covenant because you know who stands with you, who's behind you, who is with you because your covenant never alters nor changes from time to time. The covenant that God made with you is forever and forever. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, but let a man examine himself. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 28. Let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth unworthily, irreverently, eateth and drinketh condemnation or damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So let's put this in the right perspective. I need to discern the Lord's body and partake of the covenant meal and know for sure that I have a covenant with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Jesus died for me on the cross, took upon himself. His body was broken for me and his blood was shed for me and that's how we partake in this covenant meal. And uh, if we don't do it, and if we don't examine ourselves and see, when you examine yourself, don't, when you examine yourself, don't put yourself in a position of being in condemnation. When you examine yourself, what do you examine yourself? Who you are in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God. That word, examine yourself, means, it means see what God has approved in your life, approving of all what God has for you. So he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, don't do it unworthily, don't do it irreverently, don't just do it as a religious act. You know, lots of people, they do it religiously. It doesn't help them. We have a covenant with God here on earth. While we are living in this darkness, while there is darkness around us, gross darkness, we have a covenant with heaven. And a covenant is somebody who is standing with you, somebody who is taking care of you, somebody whom you can rely on, somebody who you can call upon, somebody whom you can believe on for your protection. For everything. This is for everything. It's not just religious. Oh, we just do it as a religious act. No, it's not. We have never, it's just doing it irreverently. Because the next verse says, for this cause we have taken this covenant meal irreverently, unworthily, and not examined who we are in Christ Jesus. For this cause, many, not a few, it says, many are weak. Weak. They find it so difficult to overcome temptations. They find it so difficult to overcome temptation because this covenant meal has not been rightly partaken of. And many sickly among you, many sickly among you. So which means this covenant meal gives me strength, it keeps me in divine health, and many sleep. It's a... That scripture could be read. This person, he can even have a premature death. That could be understood. Many sleep. Many prematurely die. For one sole reason is because they don't, they don't know their, their, their covenant rights. So they sleep early. Many sleep. Because they don't have any victories on earth. They don't enjoy what God has for them. They are, they kind of think, well, 
nothing much for me to live for. But if you really understand that scripture, you will read it like this. So that this covenant meal is a meal that God has prepared for me. For this cause, I can be strong, overcome temptation. I can walk in health and be a blessing to other lives also. And I don't want to go to an early grave, but I want to live for the glory of God. I don't want to live, I don't want to go to an early grave, but I want to live for the glory of God. That's good enough. This, this covenant meal is so, imp- that's how important it is. That's how important this covenant meal is. That I will not go early. I'm not going to give up on life. Some people are already sleeping in the sense they may have not even moved away from this earth, but they're still they are spiritually dull, knowing nothing at all of spiritual things. So as we partake in this covenant meal, let's consider these things. Thank you, Lord. You carried my burden When you hung on that cross The weight of the world Sickness and sin And poverty Because you were stripes I am healed. He carried my burden. Oh yes he did. And now I am free. He carried my burden. He carried my burden. Oh yes he did. your glorious name we thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord for your grace thank you Lord for your love towards us oh God thank you for all the good that you do for us oh God thank you Lord for healing our bodies thank you Lord Jesus for strengthening us 
Thank you, thank you, Lord, for you are always good and you always keep us, Lord, from all harm and danger, Lord. You are so great and greatly to be praised. We honor you this day, Father. And we are so thankful, Lord, that in the midst of all darkness around us, you are still the covenant-keeping God, the burden-bearing Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You are always born all our shame and our sorrows, and you have given us health, life, and honor. We are so thankful to you. We are so thankful to you, Lord. We can do nothing. We cannot pay you back, Lord. It's just grace and grace alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake together. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We praise you. We glorify your name. We thank you, Lord. Praise your mighty name. Praise your glorious name. Praise your everlasting name. Praise you, Jesus, for all who you are, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for healing our bodies. And right now, I pray in the name of Jesus. You said, pray for one another that you might be healed. So, Lord, we pray for one another and we be healed. And, Lord, you said this is a prayer of faith that heals the sick, O oh Father, and forgives them, O oh God. Your word said so, Lord. I thank you, Father. It's a prayer of faith. So, right now, we take authority over every spirit of sickness and disease hovering around the lives of these dear ones and those who are viewing and those who will view later. I take authority over those spirits and we cast them out. Satan, you're a liar. Bring all kinds of symptoms and cause people to fear. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing your people, O oh God. You love them so much that you want them to be healed. So, Lord, we release the anointing of Father that will break every yoke of bondage, destroy the bondages in their lives, and they would, Lord, be free, walking in health, in the strength of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God.